Before we learn about meiosis, make sure that you have watched the video that I posted about mitosis or else you won't be able to follow along and you will be very confused with the terms that I use in this video. So without further ado, let's begin with meiosis. Meiosis is a cell division where the parent cell will produce four daughter cells that each of them has only half the number of chromosomes as compared to their parent cell. And this meiosis is a very important process in producing gametes. Without them, we won't be able to reproduce. So for example, we have a parent cell that consists of 46 chromosomes. In meiosis, cell division occurs for two times. For first round, it will divide into two daughter cells. And each of the daughter cells will undergo the second time of division to produce another two daughter cells. So all together, we have four daughter cells. And each of the daughter cell has only half the number of chromosomes as their parent. As we, in the beginning, we have 46 chromosomes and in the end, we only have 23, which is only half. So it's why in the beginning, this is the diploid cell and end of the meiosis, we have the haploid daughter cell. Haploid basically is the half the number of the original chromosomes. Before we go to in more details about meiosis, let's learn about what is the meaning of homologous chromosome. As we have mentioned before, you are the product of your papa and your mama. This is why we will inherit both of the chromosomes from them, one from the father and one from the mother. So this is a pair of homologous chromosome. Why? Because this is the same length and they are deciding the same characteristic. This might be deciding your eyes color. So don't forget, you are the product of your father and mother and not only one of them. So most probably, your father have a secret recipe about your eyes. Your mother also have a secret recipe about making the eyes color. Whenever they decide to give birth to you, they will eventually sit together and decide what color of eyes that you will have. But then, this chromatin, in S phase, they will eventually undergo replication of DNA. So this is why you will see something like this to be considered as homologous chromosome. And whenever they pair up together in the cell divisions, we consider it as tetrad or bivalent. So this pair up process is what we call as a synapsis, which will be learned later on. And they will try to cross over to exchange their information later on. So whenever they cross together, this is what we call as the tetrad, and we eventually have four sister chromatid. So we have a pair of the homologous chromosome, means we have two chromosomes, which is the homologous chromosome, and we have four sister chromatid, is considered as tetrad. So now, let us see what happens when they cross over with each other. Can you see that? They are overlapping at these locations. These locations have a specific name called chiasma. So chiasma is whenever both of the homologous chromosome has their crossing over process. Crossing over is basically just a process where the exchange of genetic materials between two non-sister chromatid at chiasma. So this process must be occur only in between non-sister chromatid. Let's say the orange one we call as a one and two. One and two are sister chromatid because they are bound together at the same centromere. This is just like same family. So we won't able to get married between family members. So this is why number three and number four are also same family. They won't able to cross over with their own family. So this is why they need to cross over with other peoples. So two and three are considered as non-sister. So this is why crossing over are possible. So once crossing over is done, what happens is the red chromosome, the lower end here, where is the chiasma, will turn to the color of their partner. 
same goes for the gray one, the chiasma location will turn to become red. So this is a very important process to produce the genetic variations. This is why you are the combination of both your father and mother. You look more handsome and prettier than your parents most probably because you are the fusion of both of them. You get the best of the both world. So as we mentioned before, meiosis undergoes cell division for two times. So this is why it begins with process number one. So again, we use animal cell to illustrate the meiosis. So this is the plasma membrane and we have four chromosomes inside the nuclear membrane or nuclear envelopes. So if you have watched the previous video, we have learned about CNS, chicken nugget salad, where we say chromosome and centrios nuclear membrane and nucleolus and lastly we have spindle fiber so like usual chromosome is checking this stupid video out so where it become condensed shorten thicken this y is now visible under the microscope and the centrios remember this is a fishing rod where if you go to the opposite poles where they will attach together with the fishing line which is our spindle fiber and both the nucleolus and the nuclear membrane will break down and disappear. But what's so special about the Profess 1 as compared to mitosis is the homologous chromosome will actually pair up to become the tetrad or bivalent. So this happened through a process has the name of synapsis. Synapsis is a process where the homologous chromosome will pair up to form the bivalent. Whenever they pair up, they tend to have the process of crossing over, which is the exchange of the genetic information between, again, they are between the non-sister chromatid at the specific location called chiasma. So we have learned after prophase, it followed by metaphase, M for middle, where all of the chromosome line up in the middle of the cell called metaphase plate. But this time, instead of only one chromosome, we have a pair of homologous chromosome. So you might use the word of the homologous chromosome line up randomly along the metaphase plate. Or sometimes we use a pair of the homologous chromosomes. Or we can say this is a tetrad or bivalent. And at the same time, the spindle fiber is attached to each of the chromosome in the bivalent. After metaphase, we will have the anaphase where the spindle fiber contract. This is why the chromosome get pulled towards the poles. But the difference between mitosis is, mitosis is we have one chromosome and when they pull, the chromosome was separated to become two sister chromatid. But this one is from tetrad, or we call it a pair of the homologous chromosome. After they get pulled, each of them will get one complete chromosome. So this is why we use the chromosome is get pulled towards the opposite poles. This way the homologous chromosome would get separated to become individual chromosomes. And this is why they are not happy enough because they only get one and not two. So it's why they go home and tell the story to their mama, which is the telophase. Telophase begin when the chromosome arrive at the opposite poles and they will sooner or later become uncoy and not condense anymore. Again, the fishing rod, which is, we can just put it at anywhere, which is a random positions and both the nuclear membrane and nucleus will form back and reappears. But the spindle fiber will just go disappears. So in the end, cytokinesis happens and cut through entirely to separate the two daughter cells. But instead of two identical daughter cells, as we can see here, these two cells have a different orientation of the chromosome. So this is why we produce the genetic variations. But since in the beginning, we have four chromosomes, but now each of the total cell has only two chromosomes, which is half 
as compared to the four chromosome. So this is why in the end of the meiosis one, we have two haploid daughter cells are formed. And each of the daughter cells will undergo the cell division for the second time. But for simplicity, I will only show you one of them and later on I will show the result for both of them. So this one will eventually undergo for the cell division for the second time. So this time we have only chromosome. And the difference between profess 1 and profess 2 is in profess 2, the chromosome won't pair up by synapses. They won't pair up anymore and there's no crossing over occurs. So this is basically a repeating process of just mitosis. So chromosome is checking this stupid video out. Centrios move to the opposite poles. Like usual, spindle fiber is formed and both nucleus and nuclear membrane will just break down and disappears. And it followed by the metaphase 2 where the chromosome line up in the metaphase plate. So now it's not a pair of them, it's not tetrad, it's just chromosome, which is basically just a mitosis. And when the spindle fiber contract and pull, again, the chromosome will break into half to become sister chromatid. So now instead of chromosome, we say the spindle fiber contract and the sister chromatid get pulled towards the opposite poles. And now we have the telophase 2, where each of the sister chromatids arrive at the opposite poles and the process of uncoy and not condense happen again. And the centrioles is just at the random positions, both the nuclear membrane and nucleus will be reappear and form back. And last, the spindle fiber just disappears. Since this is only one cell, just now we have two cells that undergo for a second time of a cell division. So one produce two again, so two produce four of the haploid daughter cells. But each of them are actually non-identical to each other. And this is the most important one to produce the genetic variations. So as a recap, meiosis begins with profess 1, where the special things as compared to mitosis is the homologous chromosome will pair up to form tetrad or bivalent through the process of synapsis and crossing over occurs between the non-sister chromatid at a very specific location called chiasma. It follows by metaphase 1 where the pair of the homologous chromosome line up in the middle of the cell. Anaphase happens when the spindle fiber contract and pull the entire chromosome towards the poles. This is a time where the homologous chromosome gets separated. And if followed by telophase 1, telophase 1 begins when each of the chromosomes arrive at the poles. This is where the nuclear membrane and nucleus reform and spindle fiber just disappears. In order to separate the cells, cytokinesis will eventually happen. This is where we will produce two haploid daughter cells. And each of the daughter cells will eventually undergo the second times of cell divisions, where we begin with prophase 2, same as mitosis, and it's eventually without crossing over and synapsis. So this is basically just a repeating of mitosis. And it followed by metaphase 2, where all the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell, and whenever the spindle fiber contract, the sister chromatid get pulled towards the pole. And whenever the sister chromatid arrive at the poles, this is where telophase 2 begin. Cytokinesis will eventually happen and separate the cells to become four daughter cells. As a reminder again, all of the daughter cells are eventually haploid and non-identical to each other. So what are the importance of meiosis? So meiosis produce genetic variations. This is why you are more handsome or more pretty than your friend. And it produce only half the number of chromosome as compared to their parent cell. This is to make sure that we can maintain the diploid number in the next 
generations so that whenever we have the fusion of between the sperm cell which only consists of 23 and the ovum cells contain also 23 when they fuse together to form the zygote now we go back to 2n which is the diploid cells so this is why we can make sure that our next generation is still human and not something like potatoes or pineapple hey you want to join my online tuition class please drop me a message on telegrams or if you want to support us so that we can make more videos like this the simplest way is just to sharing the video with your friends hit the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel see you in the next video